Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandal and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up is directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Welcome to Speak Up. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and I'm joined here today with Dot Nightingly. Now, we've had Dot uh, before on the show, and uh, Dot does a lot of research. And one of the main topics of research is the Department of Youth and Child and Family, or is it D DCYF? DCYF. DCYF. And I asked Dot to come back onto the show because uh, she blogs a lot of information uh, regarding this particular uh, state agency. And I wanted her to give us an update. Uh, some of you know Dot as Unhappy Grandma, or Grammy, Grammy. not Grandma, uh, and uh, are familiar with some of her work. Some of you are not. But hopefully this will be an eye-opening uh, segment for you uh, regarding uh, the Department of uh, Child and Family. So uh, welcome to the show, Dot. Hi, Kevin. Thank you and for I, having me. I appreciate you coming on. Now, I just a couple of things nabbed me as I was looking at some of the material that you were you were uh, going over and one of the things that speak up is is for is, is for accountability right and uh, transparency in the government making them accountable to the people that are paying the bill right or being abused by the system and uh, specifically you you've done some research on uh, some auditing yeah i did um i found the federal audit but for 2010, um, it for was only done, it was for DCYF, but it was the federal, okay. the federal itself, the CFSR. It was conducted the week of 2000, August 2nd, 2010. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. But they only did it on, let me see, uh, Littleton, Conway, Manchester, and Portsmouth. Now, is that standard when they do an audit? They don't audit the entire state. They just take uh, bits and It pieces. seems like every time they've done an audit, they only do it for those towns. Really? Every time. Um, they failed it, okay? They needed improvement in, in tons of different places. Now, they're supposed to score an 85? A 95. A 95 on, on their, their score. Yes. And how did... The, let's take Nashua, see how we're, we live in Nashua. How did Nashua rate as far as their, their audit? Nashua failed miserably. Really? What was their score? And this wasn't the, the, the federal one. This is the other one, the one for Nashua. Um, what it is is other towns, DCYFs, go in, and they go through all their records. Mm -hmm. So they went into Nashua's, and Nashua, they, they, there's one thing, repeat maltreatment. There's a star there. They couldn't give an answer. There's no repeat maltreatment because they don't give the kids back once they're placed in foster care. How can there be repeat maltreatment? So they got a star for nothing. So I'm, I'm noticing 75, 33, yeah. 66, right. NA, NA. Yep, 66. Nashua, Nashua got, um, let me see, timeliness of initiating investigations of reports of, of child maltreatment. They got 100 on that one. Wow, you know, that's in their benefit. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's things like um, placement with relatives. They got 33.3 percent. That's the 33. Now that's how we were linked a little bit to you because yes. in your particular case, your grandchildren were put in foster care. Yes, without, instead of being placed with relatives, never considered. Never considered, and that that is a, a federal requirement. Yeah, 42 USC. 42 USC. So what happened when the the, the DCY department came in, they, they took your grandchildren right after they were born. Right. Uh, and placed into foster care without considering you or your brother. Right. And then what happened? My brother called, t 
talked to Tracy Govins from the Nashua office, and she said relative placement was not an option. Isabella is going into foster care, period. So that's where she went, into foster care. Have you uh, filed a federal lawsuit yet? No, but okay. I know plenty of people are planning on it. All right, so now, has the, your grandchildren been adopted? Um, Isabella was adopted. Um, in Austin, they told us he was going to be adopted, but we don't know if he ever was. And you, you still have not seen your grandchildren? No. That's interesting. It's been seven years. Seven years. Now, do you know ab about their welfare at all? No, I don't. I know um, Isabella is in a home where uh, there's too many people that live there. Right. It's a condo. It's a two-bedroom condo. Oh. Um, and the, there's a person that lives in the house, has been in all kinds of trouble with the law. Uh, he was in on a, um, what was it? Oh, he was, in, he was an accomplice in a, it was, a, I guess, a burglary, and a gun was pulled. He was been in other trouble since then. But I can't get the records from the police department, so Isabella is still there. Let's, before we get into a few more facts, let's go into a little bit more of this history, because uh, one of the things that, that seems to be popping up a lot with these foster cares, the foster care is, is part of the DCYF. They, put, they, yes. they place, and that's not really the, the mission statement of DCYF. They're supposed to help families. They're supposed to preserve families. But if you go into Governor Lynch's transparency website, mm -hmm. I've gone in there several times, and there's a spot on there that says um, the money that has gone into services for families is zero. All right, so that Title IV money? Title IV funding. Okay, is it Title IV D or is it Title D4? Um, it's Title IV E. There's Title IV A, which they, when DCYF first comes into someone's life, they try to get the person to sign that paper. And what it is is it tells the government that the person either is on TANF, is eligible for TANF, or is going to get TANF. All right, we just had a recent guest uh, ripping off the mask off welfare. Yeah. The author, she, she talked about TANF and right. about disability. So that's another part of that, uh, right. that system. Right. TANF, interesting. So that Title IV money, A and E. And I think there's B also. Okay, so there's a lot of federal money that comes in. Right. And uh, I believe we had Denise McIntosh, or McIntyre. McIntosh. McIntosh. I got it right the first time, Denise. Yeah. Uh, she was on the show, and she was talking about this little piece of paper that when DCY yes. comes to your door, if you sign that piece of paper, you're admitting guilt. Right, but they don't put it in there until after you sign it, the different services. My daughter, um, she refused to sign that paper for Melissa Dean when they took her daughter. Melissa Dean signed it herself. My daughter wasn't on TANF. She wasn't going on TANF, and she wasn't eligible for TANF. My husband and I had already told them that we were going to provide for them financially. So Melissa Dean signed it herself in order to get the federal funding. Now, when your grandchildren were taken away from you, you filed a petition with the Redress of Grievance Committee. Yes. And how long did that process take? Oh, my God. It was long. All right, it now, was a long process. The majority leader, uh, Pete Silver, was your, your sponsor. Yeah. All right. And so when you say a long process, a year, a year and a half? Um, it was about a year and a half. A year and a half. Walk me through a little bit of that process, if, if you will. I, and I, I'm asking you a loaded question because I sat on that committee. Yeah. Uh, as you're going through the process, what did you, what did we ask you to do? We asked you to, to bring testify, in, right? to bring proof, which I had it all the first time I went. Documented. Evidence. Documented evidence. Yes. Now that went before the entire committee. Yeah. The entire committee looked at it, and after a year and a half of process, they had a finding. The petition was founded. Isabella was taken illegally. Right. And then what happened after that? Thanks to the Democrats, the redressed grievance committee is no more. Right. So as it stands, you have a finding right. with a full committee. 
of, of the evidence that you brought before that committee, right. and now it's just sitting there in limbo in, right. in, in the Democrats' hands. Uh, is it possible that that finding can also be brought before a, in, in, for a federal lawsuit? I hope so. Right. That, uh, that is one option that may be uh, considered. There, right. there were about 20 different redresses or petitions that were that were founded that were founded right that are still waiting to be processed right so that didn't stop you from doing some more research you're 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 continuing this right. fight and you're continuing to look more into the matrix of this government uh, right uh, because our federal government they've got to know what's going on DCYF has to be falsifying the paperwork you know, because relative placement is supposed to be considered first. What are they telling the federal government? Oh, oh, we looked for relatives? They didn't look for any relatives. Have you asked for a 91A on, on the, the information regarding your grandchildren? or A 91A? Now, basically, an informa uh, a right to know uh, as far as your case with, with your grandchildren. You mean with DCYF? Yeah. I have the whole entire file okay. of both, both of the kids, both their parents. Um, what I don't have is the CD where the DCYF lawyer perjured herself in court and slandered my family. Okay. And they won't give it to us. Why? They sealed it. Because it would show that she lied. Interesting. Now, apparently there's another case that's, that's out there where uh, uh, DCYF apparently withheld information that would have exonerated right. a particular. We'll bring that case up in a, in a future time, but apparently that's another federal lawsuit that uh, will be brought up. So where, where are we now in our, in our research? Okay, they've, they failed the audit they had in 2003. Okay. They failed it again in 2010. Nashua, it's really bad. Risk and safety assessment for the kids. Um, Nashua got a 66.7. I mean, they have all the lowest scores here. All the lowest scores. Um, permanency outcomes. Uh, on paper, DCYF and the court state reunification. But they know at the onset of the case, there's not going to be reunification. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's 44.4. That's what they got on that one. Um, stability of foster care placement. 77.8. Kids keep being moved around. I was on the internet the other night, okay, on Facebook, and I went on the DHHS, New Hampshire DHHS on Facebook, and I went in, I clicked into something else, and it brought me to the adoption website for New Hampshire DCYF. This little boy, okay, that I had on my school bus, that my daughter um, went to different picnics and outings with the mother and the four kids. He was on the website. He's up for adoption. He's been in foster care six years. Six years. He was also drugged, just like my grandson was. Six years to place him. And he's not with his siblings. Or, a cynical question is, when, if they're not in, in, in placed back with the family, why? What, is it because the family's unfit, or is there federal money tied to them being in foster care? It's federal money tied to them being, being in foster care. DCYF keeps getting incentive money. The foster parents get paid. Um, Austin and Isabella are both half Spanish, okay? They consider um, being biracial in New Hampshire as a special needs. Kids over nine to be adopted, is they there consider price, that is, special is needs. Is there a dollar amount with that? Yeah, the, the foster parents, and once they adopt them, they keep getting paid every month, every month, even after they adopt, because they're considered special needs, even though they're not. So each case, each child generates a, a certain matching fund with, right. with Title IV money. Yeah. It goes into, where does that money first end? Does it go into the general, uh, uh, the, the general fund, or does it go to a 501c3? I have no, I have no clue. Okay. So there's money generated. Right. It goes. It's de designated to that child, but it just gets filtered through a caseworker, a foster care, right, and the system. Right. And the foster care people, they get um, extra money for Christmas to buy the kids presents. They get extra money for school clothes. Uh, so this is an industry. Right. 
it's a mon- it's a money market is what it is. And they have stockholders. Why do they have stockholders? You know what I mean? How do, can you back that up with evidence? There's um what's the name of that place? I found it on the internet. They do have stockholders and how, how can a 501c3 have a, a stockholder? I have no idea. I have no idea. They consider DCYF a business now. Can can you forward me that, that yeah, information? I will. And yeah. uh, we'll we'll have that out there uh, for, right. for the people to to, to see. Uh, that's interesting. Right. Uh, if you can prove that. Right. Well when we went to Concord one day, there was a there was a lot of us there and um, Maggie Bishop was speaking. Who's Maggie Bishop? She's the head person of New Hampshire DCYF and she's also the head person of the juvenile what is it? It's the thing in Concord the, with the juvenile delinquents. She's ahead of that now, too. Um, she spoke in front of all of you, and she was telling us about this, how she made this big plan, you know, to make everything different for foster kids. That was a couple of years ago. And she came out and said in front of everybody that DCYF is now a business. And I'll, I'll never forget that because I knew all along it's a business. They're, they're making money. You know? Right. Now, it's funny. We asked them to, to come before the committee, and, of course, the Attorney General said that they didn't have to. Right. I, I found that to be interesting. Uh, well, they would have, they were in a lose-lose situation. If they had shown up and the Redress Grievance Committee asked them the questions, and they answered the questions truthfully, I know all my paperwork, all my evidence shows that they didn't handle things the way they were supposed to. How do we get this agency into, uh, to, in, to be accountable to these findings? We need the federal government to step up. Right. So you need to file a federal lawsuit. Right. They need to do something. They need to stop funding them. Right. So what are, what are some of the other scores that you have there? I noticed that you have... Uh, um, how effective is the agency in, in achieving timely adoption when that is appropriate for the child? They got a 25. I know my, my granddaughter... Aren't the feds supposed to stop, jump in and when they get these scores? I mean, aren't they supposed to do something about this? Yeah, they should, but they're not. I, I have no clue why. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why they just let it keep happening and happening. But Nashua was the worst one. They had the worst of them all. Uh... Family relationships. They get on that one. 55. Preserving connections, 75. This one is, uh, oh, the absent parent affidavit that supposedly was established in 2006. They didn't give my daughters a, a, an absent parent affidavit. It what wasn't in the file. They're supposed to fill it out and let them know where the father is, you know what I mean, his name and all that. Um, they didn't do any of there that. There were a lot of things that they didn't do, and they right. just took the baby and, right. and ran. Yes, that's so exactly what they did. Without any accountability. Right. Here, we got one. All right. yeah. Now, w- some people will say, well, you know, maybe that, that child didn't belong in, in that family. And you know, that there, there's going to be those people that, that will, will right. come out there, and they'll be pious and self-righteous. And, uh, right. you know, look, you know, there was a troubled family. That was a troubled mother. Does that give the state or the right to take it away from the grandparents? Or the uncle. No, and what they charged my daughter with to begin with, neglect in the future. Neglect in the future. The baby was just born. They got born. a crystal ball. Right. You know, the baby was just born. And the baby had morphine in her that was given to the mother in labor. You know? Right. So, and I, I found out more stuff today if you check out my blog. In fact, I think I sent it to you also. What is the name of your blog? Unhappy Grammy Grandparents Blog. Okay, and that can be found on your own Anyone Facebook? can find it. Right. I'm on tons of pages. Okay. Um, there was something I found out today. Uh, they tried to say that, the ba- that my daughter, okay, I'm going to put it this way. I found out about fal- false positive testing. When Isabella was born, I went to my daughter's court-appointed lawyer, Brian Major, and I told him, she has hepatitis C. Um, that's going to make the drug tests come out positive. And they were. They were coming out positive all the time because your liver isn't functioning right. to get the toxins out. He said to me, oh, I spoke to my brother about it. He's a doctor. He said it's not possible. I knew it was. 
I found the stuff today. There was new research done in July. I put it out on my blog, and I wrote another piece about it. Diabetes, okay, and um, liver disease will cause false positives for cocaine and opiates. Is your daughter a diabetic? She was a diabetic. Um, well, put it this way, I went through her whole file when we got it, and I, I went through everything, everything it said. I went through all the lab tests. It showed she was a diabetic. She wasn't treated. We already knew she had the hepatitis C. You know what I mean? So her liver was diseased. When December rolled around, four months after they took the baby, um, the liver cleared itself. Her doctor said the liver cleared the hepatitis. Well, right after that, once we found out the liver had cleared it, all her drug tests were negative. Tell me a little bit more about your blog. Are people responding to these, these findings? Oh, yeah, they're responding. It, it, are, are you finding other people that have been abused by the system? Yes, and I have people. They were calling me all the time. I had to stop the phone calls. There was too many, mm -hmm. too many. And people writing to me from all over the country. Ha has your blog been hacked at all by any chance? Yes, several times, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, just people angry with you or...? No, it's probably DCYF. Who do you think it is? <laughs> yeah, <who knows? laughs> um, I wouldn't put it past them, you know. In this process, where are you? Where, you know, you're not going to give up. You're no, out, I'm not going to give up. Never, I've asked you that before, no. so you're going to continue. And uh, I'm just your courage in, in, in hanging in there instead of just giving up and walking away. No, they picked the wrong Grammy. Right. And and there you say now this is not just statewide this 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 is just this New is Hampshire. worldwide, but New Hampshire, I found them to be the worst. You know they consider kids to be in imminent danger. Any time a call comes in, they're in imminent danger, so they just go in and snatch them. They come in your house and they no court order, no warrant. They come in and grab the kids. You know, hmm. been there. Right. It, um, it it's. Title IV funding has to stop, and I'd like to see DCYF abolished. And you're going to ask me, who would I like to handle this if DCYF were abolished? I would like it to go back to the police, the police handling real abuse, mm -hmm. not, not these stupid, frivolous reasons. Um, oh, oh the, your, your child has dirty socks on today. We're taking them. You know what I mean? Things like that. You could document cases like that. Yeah, there's all kinds of cases. Mm -hmm. One kid was taken because his parents gave him chocolate. Chocolate. And I told you about the other little boy. They took him and his sisters because his parents uh, named them Adolf Hitler. Well, which isn't a great thing to no, do. No, it's not, but it's, but it's not abuse. Right. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Um, so, uh, again, the name of your blog is Unhappy Grandma. There... The city of Nashua has failed miserably, apparently. Miserably, yes, right. miserably. Is there another audit in line after failing this audit? Um, probably not for years from now, but we, keep, we want the audit, period. We want an audit from the state. We want them audited constantly. Have you talked to any of your new state representatives to see if, they, if they'd be interested in helping out? Democrats, are you kidding? They do nothing for us, right. nothing. You know, if, they don't if, do anything. If, if, so what is the use of an audit if, if somebody fails? I have no clue. We just have to keep pushing. In Lawless America, he's doing the, um, the movie, yeah. the documentary. I was in that. What is Lawless America? Um, he's going around state to state, Bill Windsor Bill is. Windsor, yeah. And he's videotaping everybody with their stories of abuse. And, of course, like with you, we have to give them all the proof. Right. You know, he's not going to do it without proof, which I don't there's blame There's all kinds him. of stories, and there's, there's three sides to every right. story. Right, right. And uh, that's one thing about the redress. Uh, you know, if, if somebody came in with an affidavit. Right. And a court order. Yeah. And the documentation was there. Right. What more do you need? Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, and, and so... Uh, if, if one violated the other or, and, and they both violated the individual's rights, that's where we were with, with our findings. And right. we came, people came in with boxes. 
oh, I know, I gave it to the committee twice because the first time it was the caucus. I had papers like that right. both times. And, and that was very cumbersome. Now you know that there's an, uh, the Center for Redress of Grievances yeah. and that uh, it will be coming up and running pretty yeah. shortly. And I'll be doing research for it. Fantastic. And we want to thank you for coming on the show. And we wanted to get you up there. Is there anything else that you can add to our... This, this is what I want to add. This is from the FAPA website, okay, which is, is the FAPA? Foster and Adoptive Association website. And it's from March... February to March 2012. <clears throat> now, if you go to page four, the permanency round table, the outcomes in the next phase. New Hampshire continues to make great strides to achieve permanency for youth in the state's care, right? Now, they brag about placing kids with relatives and giving kids back, okay? This is what was on their website. Two youth were reunified with their birth parents. Wow, two youth. You know, what's that tell you? What's that tell you? How many children were adopted? Oh, I'll tell you that too. Eight youths were reconnected with their birth parents or birth family, right? Two youth were reconnected with other past connections. One youth has moved into a relative home. Five children have been matched and are in transition into a foster family. Okay, page five shows nine children Nine children were adopted in November, 20 in December, two in January of 2012, five in February. I wonder how many of those kids were adopted by relatives when it shows you here how it went. And the, the two kids that we returned, I know who the two kids were. And believe me. I've heard from, from some people in the, the, the uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the bureaucracy thing, listen, it's not DCYF's fault. What happens is we're just not paying these, these caseworkers enough. Bull. And what happens is we train them here in New Hampshire, and they run down across the border we're in the Massachusetts where they get more money, so we're getting the bottom of the barrel of caseworkers, and that's why we're running into this problem. The caseworkers, okay, I've come across a couple really nice ones that were truthful, and they advocated for placement, okay? They're not there anymore. Okay. They're gone, you know. Um, they send them to school. They send them to college. We pay for them to go to college, and then they open their own business or they leave. Well, we actually had a whistleblower uh, founded in the uh, redress of grievance who worked for DCYF, and she'll actually be on the show. Oh, uh, good. I can't wait. Uh, I would love I to her talk name was to her. Beth. Beth. Is it Beth Case? Uh, Beth Chase. No, I believe it's. Not, I, don't quote me on the name. No. I, but uh, her case was founded, and uh, she, as far as the abuse Oh, Beth Capen. Capen. I didn't know that. She was a foster parent. Okay. Yeah, well, and, I know of another foster parent, But she parent also too. worked for DCYF. Oh, really? Yeah, from what I, I understand. I know of another foster parent also. Mm -hmm. um, they claim they have too much work, they're overrun and all that. Well, when the Teresa, what was her name? She was abusing her daughter. Oh, I can't think of her last name. This was um, a while back maybe five or six years, maybe long. Oh, um, oh, I can't think of her name. Um, one of the foster parents that I know, Melissa Dean, who worked, she was an assessment worker for DCYF in Nashua. She went to this girl's house and knocked on the door, tried to find out if um, the girl was being abused. Well, she was supposed to go knock on the door. She ended up back at this foster parent's house and sat there all day shooting the breeze and having coffee. She told DCY if she couldn't find her. The mother is in jail now. You must know the case where the girl was being squirted with water at night and all that. Yes. Yeah, that yes. one up on French Hill. Mm -hmm. um, case worker, the assessment worker never went there. The neighbor and, tried reporting it for over a year. And so lives are being destroyed because of this. Right. And so who's actually doing the neglect? Right. And the little boy that was killed, what was it, last year, Christian? I don't remember this one. They were reported to DCYF several times. Nobody did anything. You know, you're in their radar and they don't do anything. You know, the kids that have drugs in their system, they give them back. They do it now. They let mothers keep the kids and they're on methanol, you know, but they didn't before. Right. So I think I've changed that one. 
Well, we, will you come back on the show again? Yeah, in, of course. In the future, and we'll, we'll talk about some more uh, issues. But uh, we want to keep current, and we want to get an update. Right. Uh, as of right now, you still haven't been reunited with, with no. your grandchildren. You've just been alienated, period. Right. All right. Well, thank you for watching Speak Up. And Don, I want to thank you for coming You're on. And please check out Dot's blog, uh, Unhappy Grandma. Unhappy Grammy. Grammy. Sorry, Unhappy <laughs> Grammy. And uh, thank you for watching uh, Speak Up again. And thank you for the Center for Redress of Grievance for sponsoring this show, as well as Art Park, the Dean of Queen. And if you'd like to sponsor Speak Up or the Center, please give us a call. Can I say one more thing? Sure. My grandson Austin's birthday is January 25th, the one that's been adopted. That's my birthday. Is it really? Mm. I, I want to say happy birthday to him. Well, look at the camera and do it. Happy birthday, Austin. We love you. And happy birthday. So thank you for watching Speak Up. And uh, please uh, let us know if you have an issue that you'd like to talk about. It's documented. Please contact us. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back.